These guys make being a baddie or an accomplice of one look like way too much fun. Yep, that's Kronk. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 animated Disney villain henchmen. One more pinch and they'll throw the keys away. Oh, come off it, Oris. For this list, we're looking at memorable characters that assisted the main villain in an animated Disney movie. Of all the stupid little idiots, I'll do it myself. They must be pure Disney, so Pixar movies don't count. We're also excluding the magic mirror from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, as it is more of an impartial advisor. Lips red as the rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. Number 10, Sir Hiss, Robin Hood. Oh, oh, there you are, oh boy. This sneaky serpent can best be remembered for his hissing evil plans into Prince John's ear throughout Robin Hood. Sire, sire. He may be bandits. Oh, Bobbycock. We can't help but feel sorry for Sir Hiss as he proved to be one of the few villainous sidekicks that was actually a pretty good henchman, especially with his cool hypnotizing powers, but nonetheless constantly suffered physical abuse from his boss. <laughs> He's also shown to have a conscience, such as when he shows disgust at Prince John's order to execute Friar Tuck, which gives us a reason to like him. Another trap? Yes, yes, you stupid serpent. Or at least see him as less of a despicable character than his boss. Friar Tuck will be led to the gallows in the village square, don't you see? But, but, but sire, hang Friar Tuck, a man of the church. Number nine, pain and panic, Hercules. He's not gonna be happy when he gets out of there. You mean if he gets out of there. These two shape-shifting imps may have spent their entire lives living in the underworld, but they still manage to be adorable despite this. Yeah, I mean, Hercules is a very popular name nowadays. Remember, like a few years ago, every other boy was named Jason? Pain and Panic serve as Hades' slightly dim-witted minions, as well as the comedic relief for the musical fantasy Hercules. We are worms! <laughs> Worthless worms! <laughs> Memo to me. Memo to me. Maim you after my meeting. It's hard to view these little demons as truly evil when they're constantly shape-shifting into things like cute little birds or innocent fresh-faced kids. Oh, and the moment when Hades finds pain wearing air hercs is absolutely priceless. What are those? Um, I don't know. I, I thought they looked kind of dashing. Number eight, Facilier's Shadow, the princess and the frog. A tip of the hat from Dr. Facilier. Okay, we know what you're thinking. How does someone's shadow count as a henchman? While Dr. Facilier's shadow may not have any lines, it still manages to be a creepy presence in every scene it's in. If you relax, it will enable me to do anything I please. Whether it's taunting Prince Naveen's valet Lawrence or dancing along with friends on the other side, the shadow shows it has a mind of its own, yet remains completely loyal to the voodoo priest. I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. Dr. Facilier's magic shadow makes him and his voodoo all the more intriguing. Uh, no. <laughs> Number seven, Jasper and Horus. 101 Dalmatians. There they go, Oris Milan. Out for their evening constitutional. These two bumbling henchmen are a bit like Pain and Panic in that one is short and fat while the other is tall and skinny. But they both make us laugh for their incompetence. I don't like it, Jasper. In this case, though, their boss is the wicked Cruella de Vil, who hires Jasper and Horace to kidnap the Dalmatian puppies, which, of course, they fail at miserably. Jasper, you idiot! How dare you call here? But we don't want no more of this here. We want our boodle. The hilarity these two brought to the film is hard to ignore, and the fact that they don't actually enjoy doing what Cruella pays them to do adds to their bumbling appeal. Oh, knock your blinking block off! <laughs> Number six, Anastasia and Drizella Tremaine, Cinderella. Why, that's us, and I'm so eligible. While the majority of these villainous sidekicks are sort of likable, Cinderella's ugly stepsisters are characters that you just love to hate. I'd be honored, your highness. Would you mind holding my broom? <laughs> they join their mother in constantly abusing and bullying their stepsister Cinderella. One of their most memorably evil scenes is when they tear apart Cinderella's dress right before the ball. Oh, you 
So when they finally get their comeuppance in the end for having feet that are just way too big, it's all the more satisfying. Anastasia and Drizella are two people we definitely don't want in our family. Get away from me! I'll make it fit! Number 5. Flotsam and Jetsam, The Little Mermaid Flotsam! Jetsam! The two symbiotic eel minions of the sea witch Ursula definitely aren't in The Little Mermaid for comedic relief. Poor child. Poor sweet child. The way they each have one gold eye and how they finish each other's sentences whenever they say something threatening make them creepy more than anything else. Don't be scared. We represent someone who can help you. Someone who can make all your dreams come true. What also makes Flotsam and Jetsam different from most villainous sidekicks is that their boss Ursula seems to actually love them, as seen when they are killed, and she actually mourns for them. Babies, my poor little poopsies. Ursula may love them, but we sure don't, but that's exactly why they're unforgettable. I don't understand. Ursula has great Number 4. Kronk Pepe Krakenitz, The Emperor's New Groove And let's not forget Yzma's right-hand man. Every decade or so, she gets a new one. This year's model is called Kronk. If there is one Disney villain sidekick that actually stole the show, without a doubt, it would be Kronk. Yzma's in your chair, right? Very good, Kronk! Here, get the snack. Played hilariously by Patrick Warburton, this incompetent henchman of Yzma provides countless laughs with his amazing athleticism, love of fondue cooking, and his ability to speak squirrel. Are you talking to that squirrel? I was a junior chipmunk. He may be a villain, but he's impossible not to love. Please continue. In fact, Kronk was so well-liked, he even got his own direct-to-video movie. All the laughs he provides make Kronk one of the funniest Disney characters of all time. This is my variation of Double Dutch on the signal. We switch places. Kronk, it's time. Okay. <sighs> Number three, Mr. Smee, Peter Pan. But Captain, wouldn't it be more uh, humane like to slit his throat? I that it would, Mr. Smee. This lovable pirate plays the bumbling first mate and best friend to Captain Hook. Like every good sidekick, Smee works hard for his boss and, unlike the rest of Hook's crew, never complains. I've waited years for this. That's not gotten the holidays either. Of course, Smee's loyalty never gets appreciated and he's constantly on the receiving end of Hook's rants. Mr. Smee, pipe up the crew. Ah, I see. Pipe up the crew. Pipe up the crew. Part of what makes Smee so great is that he tries so hard to be bad, but comes off as more pathetic than anything else. Sorry, Smee, you might work for a villain, but you're definitely not a bad guy. <laughs> He'd have heard you by now, Captain, <laughs> if he hadn't swallowed that alarm clock. Number two, Shenzi, Bonsai, and Ed, the Lion King. <laughs> These three hyenas may be goofballs, but they're also terrifying when they need to be. What's the hurry? We'd love you to stick around for dinner. Shenzi is the leader and brightest of the three, Bonsai is the hostile one that's always hungry, and Ed, well, he's just dumb. <laughs> what? what, Ed? What is it? <laughs> These guys are so bad, they even did the Nazi goose step march during Scar's Be Prepared musical number. The future is littered with prizes, and though I may not see. The hyenas also get the unique distinction of being the only sidekicks that killed their boss. They kill Scar by eating him alive. That's not very G-rated, but it sure makes for some memorable henchmen. Let's go. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, you want to lighten the load? Excellent idea. Gosh, it disturbs me to see you, Gaston, looking so down in the dumps. Every guy here'd love to be you, Gaston, hey! even when taking your lumps. Talk. No. I'll lick you. You wouldn't. Oh, yeah? Oh.
Looks like sandpaper. Hmm. Wonder how many licks it'll take to get to your center. Well, I'll take it to my grave. Fair enough. No. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Number one, Iago, Aladdin. Look at this. Look at this. I'm so ticked off that I'm molting. If there is one Disney villain sidekick that is truly iconic, it's Iago. This wisecracking and short-tempered parrot is the only character on our list that is just as conniving as the villain he helps. Yes, almighty evil one! Iago is probably most well known for his comically grating voice as performed by none other than Gilbert Gottfried. And uh, how about this picture? I don't know, I think I'm making a weird face in it. Despite having a fairly small role in Aladdin, Iago has cemented himself into our memories for his ability to mimic his mischievous ways and his love of treasure. I can't believe it! I just don't believe it! We're never gonna get a hold of that stupid lamp! Just forget it! The character was so well received that he was given much more importance in the sequel. Unfortunately, in that movie we had to hear him sing. Yeah, we'll pass on that and just remember Iago for what he was in Aladdin. That's a reward for loyalty from here on in. I'm looking out for me. So, do you agree with our list? That'll work. Who do you think is the greatest Disney villain sidekick? Never had one. Never. For more fun top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Together. Forever.